Okay, welcome all. So we are on. Uh, I can see that there are still people joining here. So we will wait uh, a minute before we start. <clears throat> so this is the Nordic TV week, the, the final session. We have had two sessions before uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, great presentations from uh, Google, uh, Lisa, Wiley and, uh, and Dplay. Uh, and we have a good program for you to, uh, today as well. Um, I think we can officially start now. This looks like a good turn up today as well. So my name is, uh, is Espen Erikstad. Um, I've been working here in the TV, TV space for, uh, for, for about 20 years, uh, which only means that I'm, I'm getting old. Uh, but since 2013, I've been running a TV tech company called Norwegian Media uh, that is based here in, in, uh, in, in Oslo, Norway, uh, together with my, my, my partners. Um, for the show today, some practicalities uh, regarding Zoom. Uh, for those of you who have not been participating in the other sessions, uh, we allow for questions. Uh, you will need to ask them in the Q&A function of Zoom. So there is, um, uh, there is a function in the menu on the low uh, where you can go in and type your questions. Uh, I will read out the questions uh, to the speakers after their presentations. Uh, if we are not able to get through all the questions, we will try to answer it um, uh, in, in writing. But uh, please uh, ask questions. Uh, for the agenda today, you can see it uh, in, uh, behind me. Uh, we have Annika from uh, SVT that will take us through a very interesting project that they have done at SVT to uh, implement what they call clear speech in a streaming service. After that, we will do an, um, a demo of an award-winning Norwegian streaming service, Say No More. Uh, and at the end, we will have Tanya and Tony from NRK that will, uh, they will disclose some Quite, quite interesting numbers from the NRK streaming service and also take us through how they work with their visual identity across a wide range of devices and services at NRK. So with that, I will stop, share my screen. So SVT and SVT Play is, does not really require any, any uh, introduction here. I mean, SVT is an institution here in the, uh, in the Nordics. Everybody knows about them. Uh, they have been uh, producing and distributing uh, some of the best content in the Nordics for, for many years. Um, and SVT Play is their uh, streaming service. You can find it on uh, quite a few uh, devices, all of the most popular devices. They have different types of content, uh, movies, series, catch-up, sports. They have linear channels, and it's a completely free service. Uh, Annika Bidner, she's the product owner for SVT Play. She lives in Stockholm, has worked for SVT for the past seven years. Uh, she's a book lover and likes board games and escape rooms. She practices mindfulness every day, and on the spare time, she volunteers as a translator and reviewers of TED Talks. We therefore can expect impeccable articulation delivered in a perfect sen. I will hand it over to you, Annika. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Um, yes, I yes, hear you fine. Good. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for that kind introduction. Um, Yes, I'm here to talk about clear speech, or tydligare tal, as we uh, call it in, uh, in Sweden. Uh, it has a new thing, so it hasn't really got an international name yet, so we call it clear speech for now. So I'm going to try to uh, uh, share my screen, and uh, please tell me if it's not working. Uh, yeah, this is how it all started. We got a lot of calls for a lot of years about a problem that many people had with uh, hearing what people said in our programs. I bet you all, every one of you have uh, heard the same thing. Uh, people 
uh, don't like that we play music in the background or have sounds in the background and they call and tell us about that. And for a long time we didn't do anything actually other than just tell them sorry, uh, turn up the volume. Um, but one day we, um, we have something called technique sprint, which means um, we work for two weeks uh, on special program, projects that we, ideas that we have that we want to try out. And uh, um, I just want to tell you before I, uh, I talk about that, that this is a large group uh, that have problem with uh, hearing difficulties. It's about 10 to 15 percent or about one and a half million people in Sweden. And even more people, if you include those that have noisy environments or maybe have kids uh, running around talking while you're watching TV. So it's a, it's a very large thing, a large group that cares about this. Our first experiment uh, um, was in January this year. And you can see the actual people who worked uh, on this experiment. Julia, I think, is here today listening. Hello, Julia. She's uh, on the far right here. Uh, she's a developer of my team uh, and this they came up with a prototype to try to make a better sound for where the voice was more uh, easy to hear and it uh, they cooperated with the organization for um, people with hearing disabilities in Sweden and also with a lot of uh, different teams at SVT like uh, sound technicians coders um, video um, yeah video encoders uh, people of all kinds, designers, UX designers. And uh, the result was very promising, but we didn't have a real program to test this on. And we didn't have all the um, necessary stuff to try this out in, in, in the wild, so to speak. But uh, my team decided to try this. And also uh, one more team called Video Core. So we um, actually took this a step further. Um, I think it was in March this year we tried this or started this. Um, we, um, this is the technical solution of it. Uh, you have to have a sound of the program that is uh, multi-channel uh, and also this, the voice has to be separated in one center channel and that means we can't do this for all shows but for the shows that are recorded like this. Most new programs are but not everyone, not all of them. We raised the, uh, the center channel with a higher volume and lowered the other channels to a lower volume and made a new sound manually. Um, and uh, the player, uh, the team that I work for, uh, we made the adjustments needed to be able to select another alternative sound. And uh, the hunt started to, to find a show that we could try this on um, because it wasn't easy. Uh, we had some legal issues, we couldn't just use any show, maybe uh, um, uh, if you use the foreign program, with, they often have a, this sound, but it wasn't in the, the agreement that we could alter the sound li like we wanted. So uh, we tried a lot of shows, they didn't have the sound that we needed, but finally we found one. Uh, called uh, Caravaggio, Art and Blood, which maybe was the least popular show at that time sorry about <laughs> sorry for the producers but uh, it was great because we could uh, we got to get it out uh, we could try it out on a select uh, group of people we got feedback and it, the feedback was actually very good i'll talk more about it in a few minutes but first uh, i want to show you a demo of uh, the most uh, successful Tidal show so far. It's called Sommaren 85 or Summer 85. Maybe some of you have had it on your channels. I'm not sure. But I will try to live demo this. We'll see how it goes. See how it goes. So this is a normal sound. This is Tidal Tal. And that's back to normal sound. Yeah, that's it. Um, very simple, as you can see. It's just a, um, a place to, uh, just next to the subtitles, you change the, to another sound, which is called Tidelisar. We could also have other sounds here, like uh, Arabic or 
uh, I don't know, enhanced in another way. So we have sort of built this for uh, to be able to have more sounds of different kinds. Yes, let's see here where I am. I lost my way. Let's go back to the presentation. Um, hmm. Not sure where I am now. Um, sorry about this. I think it got stuck in it's it's uh, it got stuck somehow. Um, there, there you go. Uh, okay, uh, we found the show, and now we have about four shows ongoing. I just want to tell you something about what the users said. These are some of the comments that we received in our surveys. People are so happy and so thankful and they like, ah, oh, I, I will only watch SVT play if you make this for all the shows. And for me personally, it meant that I didn't need to use any subtitles. That's great, I think. And we have about 80 users who have uh, answered so far. Um, yeah. Uh, also, would you use Tidler Tal if it was available? Uh, around, we got a score of 9.3 out of 10 on this one, which was uh, amazing, I think. Uh, even if it's like, yeah, people say that, but I think we have a lot of 10s, so um, I think it's a good score. Um, it's not only for old people either. You can see that all age groups are happy with it. Um, and I think uh, the, uh, the people under 40 are actually the most positive ones. So I just want to say some uh, four things that I think was uh, good factors for this project. We worked on a real problem. We had a lot of uh, engaged, passionate people across departments uh, working with this. Uh, and also some people in higher places like uh, who had real power to push this forward. We had an experiment. We started small and we, we made the mistakes in, in the beginning and could iterate, make it, make it better. And we got a lot of user feedback and we also had a lot of measurements so we could know that uh, is people really used this. So what's next? Uh, we're automating the process as I speak. Uh, I think it, uh, next week we'll come up with the first automated programs. So this is really happening now in, in a larger scale. We will produce more shows with five on sound which will come uh, as a good surprise for the rest of the Swedish population because we have, we'll have better sound uh, for them as well. We will also do this on more platforms. Now it's only on web, but it will come out on Apple TV uh, quite soon. Uh, we want to make these shows easier to find because now they're sort of secret <laughs> that they're there, but uh, you don't know until you start the show if it's uh, Tidler et al or not. We want to make that visible with icons. And also we want to tell the world about this. And this is, um, that's what I'm doing now. And we try to do that in different ways. Thank you for listening. That was what I had to say. I'll stop sharing. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Annika. That was, uh, that was good. I really like the, this, uh, this solution. It's, it's quite clever and uh, quite impressive actually that you, uh, came up with this uh, idea of just like um, uh, taking advantage of something that was already there and um, and, and making this happen. Yeah. Uh, just a, a few questions here. Um, first one: uh, the, Does it only work with 5.1 audio on uh, uh, on the streams as well? Or, so it needs to be so supported on the device? Or no, it doesn't. Uh, it the only requirement is that the, the show has 5.1 sound or 3.0 uh, sound. So that, it, just the original file needs to be like that. But uh, after that, you can have any device and, and watch this or listen to this. Okay, yeah. So you're just yeah. transcoding it into a separate audio track. Basically. Yeah, it's audio, yeah, a different audio track that you can select. Okay, a question from the audience here. Uh, it's a bit on the side here, but does SVT play uh, does SVT play demand user registration before use? No, we don't. Uh, not at all, actually. We are talking. We we're working on different directions with the login, but uh, as for now, no registration required at all. And uh, yeah, you, you kind of mentioned it, uh, but uh, in terms of uh, standardization of this, I think it's a really good solution and it's, 
seems to be something that should be should be out there and not only in uh, in Sweden and SVT. How how do you, what's your thought about? Uh, are you aware of any standardization programs or where this could uh, fit in? Yeah, I, we know that uh, there's not a, a, a fixed standard yet, uh, but we know that Dolby are working on something called uh, dialogue enhancement. I think. We know that there's some initiatives on BBC. Uh, I'm not sure if they are here and can comment on that, but I've seen some ex some prototypes from BBC. Um, but um, and also I've heard heard of something uh, called clear audio that you can sort of you can tag your content with. We found that uh, that's the only standard we found so far. So I think. Um, it's sort of not ready yet, but I think a lot of people are working on the same issue. There's also a question here regarding uh, co commercialization of this. I, mm -hmm. I assume that you don't have any plans of, kind of making this a commercial product, or but you're rather going into the standardization route. Yeah, I, I don't think we should uh, <laughs> make money out of this. We are uh, rather we would make it an open source. I, I'm sure. But it, I think it's hard to copy a solution that, like this is uh, hard to like make a patent of because it's just how you, uh, what volume you have on channels. It's very, uh, it's very simple to do by yourself. So, or simple, I don't know. But it's, uh, we don't intend to, uh, to sell it, but we would like to cooperate. If someone is interested, we are willing to discuss it with you, of course. And uh, we are, we really hope that this can be a standardized solution in the future. Yeah. Okay, good. There's also some comments here regarding subtitles and whether this is, if you said it, it, it but it's not a substitution for subtitles. This will be like in addition to. Uh, yes, of course. It, a few people said that they could turn out uh, off the subtitles, but some others said, I'm keeping the subtitles and adding this, and it gives me an even better experience. I can see it, I can hear it, it's a, it makes me focus even more. So I think uh, it's a compliment, it's a, something we, you can use together with subtitles too. It's not, we're not trying to replace it, not at all. Okay, good. Thanks for that. Final question here: uh, What do you do? You, how do you expect to roll this out across uh, more platforms? Uh, I understand it's only available for web today. Yeah, uh, we are working on a solution now that uh, will make it easier for the other platforms to use it. Um, so, and I think we just succeeded uh, yesterday, actually. So, uh, Apple TV has said that they uh, are willing to try it if if this sound works for them. So, I think. I think within a month, I think Apple TV will have it. And then I guess the others will follow as, as they um, have time to include it. But uh, if, it also depends, of course, if uh, it will be a great success or if uh, almost no one will watch. But we are quite hopeful. We can see good numbers, uh, even if we have only four shows on, on one platform so far. OK, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks a lot, Annika. We will uh, move on in the program now. So, uh, let's see. Uh, so, next one up here is, uh, is, uh, is Adrian. So, for those of you who have been uh, following these uh, sessions before, you already have seen Adrian. He runs demos of um, uh, popular uh, streaming services here in the Nordics. I will share my screen. And today is uh, Rix TV. So Rix TV is perhaps not the most uh, famous pay TV operator. They're the DTT provider here in um, uh, in, in Norway. And uh, but as any pay TV operator, they also have a streaming service uh, and an OTT offering. Uh, and uh, despite being uh, quite a small team at, at, at Rix TV, they have uh, received very well feedback on their uh, streaming service. And it's being recognized as uh, uh, one of the best uh, streaming services here in the Nordic, both in terms of the, of the UI and the, uh, and the UX. And um, 
Wix TV, it uh, also supports um, uh, mobile and, and tablets. It's on the Apple TV, Android TV uh, browsers, and they have uh, set of boxes, uh, obviously, as well as Chromecast. Uh, they have a lot of content, movies, series, catch up. Uh, they do sports and they have 65 linear channels on their uh, streaming uh, services. A package in three different packages. Uh, you may all know Adrian uh, by now. Uh, a little one more fun fact about Adrian. So Adrian, he's, um, he's a big fan of a special brand of uh, swim underpants, which he promotes. So if you want to see more of Adrian, you can hit him up on, on uh, on Instagram and uh, you can see how he promotes uh, that. And with that, I will leave it over to you, uh, Adrian. Uh, thanks for that, Espen. Um, yes, it's a, I, th I think it's a very well-known fact that I have probably the largest collection of Speedos in probably Scandinavia, if not the Nordics. Um, so yeah, it's a fun fact um, for all of you who wanted to know something like that. Um, today, I'll be demoing the Rix TV application uh, on Android TV. Um, it's quite a nice application. It's got a lot of good features and also like the functionality and the user experience is really nice. Um, Rix TV have been, for the most part, they've been working on set-top boxes and they've been aligning their other applications with that in the same functionality because their user base expects a certain functionality, a certain experience, and they want that in these applications. Um, so without further ado, I think we can get uh, on with uh, the demo. Uh, this is the home page. Like most applications, it's data-driven. Uh, I've said this in the last two days, but data-driven means that the application and the code base just shows what content is presented to it. Um, so this gives the content providers or the content owners, Rich TV, the ability to promote whatever they want to the end user. And this also allows, so this just allows them to kind of own that. What we have for Rich TV is a very simple UI, but it's very effective. You have a menu at the top, which is aligned with the, the rest of the apps in their ecosystem. You have a start page, you have a TV page, and then they go and segment that into film series and kids. Underneath that, you can see that they have a promoted content carousel or a hero swim lane, and that just promotes a certain, a certain aspect or a certain content that they want, depending on the time of day or day of the week. And underneath that, you can see what Aspen was alluding to, the, the live content. They have 65 live channels, and that is, uh, is one of the main parts of their, of their applications. It, it takes a center stage in, in the app. It's, the first, it's one of the first rows on the home page, as well as the first menu section that you have, is you have the TV page. What I quite like about this, and it's something that I said yesterday, is I'm a millennial. I want something now, and I, and I know what I want, and I know that I want it now, basically. So, what this gives me is as I start focusing content, it gives me a snapshot of what's live now and the next upcoming program. So that means that I don't have to open an EPG. I don't have to scroll through everything to find the channel that I want. I can see this is the program and this is what's coming up next. I can plan my day according to that. Now, that being said, a lot of people like the EPG, the traditional grid view. And what I think Rick's TV have done very well here is they've optimized this page to, to load in really quickly. The, the EPGs are traditionally very data dense. There's a lot of content. They have 65 channels. So imagine you have to load in data for their entire period of time for, in, for 65 linear channels. That's a lot of data. That loading time was really good. And that is something that uh, I, I'm quite impressed with this. I know that we've had, we put a lot of effort in, in ourselves into making EPGs work. Um, and what they've done here is, is very nice. Uh, as I start focusing the, the different channels, you can see that there's information about what's currently live. There's also a, a timeline which tells me what is going on and how much of that program has been watched. So therefore, if I want to watch it from the beginning, I can do that. I'll show you the start of a feature in a second. Um, as I start scrolling down, I can find what I like. I'm a big fan of Scrubs personally. It's one of my favorite programs. Um, it, might, it might be dated for some people, but I quite like it. Um, much like the Speedos, I guess. So if we select this, it will start playing the content from the, the currently live position. But as you see in the bottom corner there, there is an option for start over. Now I can do that by either within the first couple of seconds of the stream starting, I can press the OK button to start the content over or from the progress bar, I can focus the start over button and then that will take me to the very beginning of the currently live program. 
if I keep on pressing that button, it will keep on going through and starting the next, the, the previous program from the beginning and so on and so forth until I'm done with the DVR window. Um, that, that's quite a nice feature. It's something that, start over is something that a lot of applications have these days, but it's, a, like I said before, it's a functionality that people have become used to and it's become, it's, it's become a must have for the user base. It's an expectation that they want met and that is something that Rick's TV have done quite well here. Another thing, and another feature that's quite nice is channel zapping. Uh, and what they've done here is they've, they've tweaked the, the traditional way of channel zapping by channel up and channel down by allowing the user to press the, the up and down arrow keys, which will scroll through a channel list. And that gives me the ability to, to scroll to see what is currently live and then press OK from there. If I want to pick that channel. Now, I want to watch this, though I want to watch the National Geographic, but because I've started this program over, it's just double checking that I want to do that. Maybe I press something by accident. Uh, maybe I don't want to do this. I might change my mind. I'm a big fan of Scrubs after all, so I think I will select no and I'll continue watching this program from the beginning. Um, additionally, what they also have is they have seeking um, as well, but if you want to just go a little bit further back, if you think you've missed something, um, in addition to the, to the start over feature, but that's something that um, kind of comes hand in hand with the DVR window. Um, that's it for the live player now. I know it's a big, it's a big feature for them, and I know that uh, the team at RigTV did a lot of work into actually developing the box and the functionality around it. So big kudos to them. Um, and that, so what I was going to talk about now is the, the VOD section. So what we have is content discovery. They've been aggregating a lot of content from providers such as HBO Nordic, Seymour, which is a big Nordic aggregator, as well as Paramount, and just to name a few. But <clears throat> what they have is they have the content carousels or swim lanes. So as you start scrolling vertically, this is the back to the data-driven aspect of things. They will curate content based on what, what um, the, what time of year it is, it might be Halloween, it might be Christmas and you want to watch some things, it might be Easter, you want to watch some Poske Krim. Uh, in the, Norway, there's a thing where over Easter, everyone watches crime. Uh, for a foreigner, it was a bit strange, but now I've really gotten into it, I've integrated into Norwegian society. Um, so if you want to watch, for example, Poske Krim, you can go into the, the genre picker and you can pick your crime genre um, and you can find any content around that. And then for, let's say, just for example, pick drama. And then now I've got all the content that is related to drama and I can pick that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of drama myself. Uh, I like to live a carefree um, existence. So I'll pick something else maybe. Um, outside of that, on these detail pages, it's, it's very good. I quite like it. It's, it's very minimalistic, but it also offers you some, some more information around it. So we have metadata, we have actors, we have directors. Uh, maybe you like you like Matthew McConaughey. You like you like different actors. You want to know that they are in a movie. You, maybe you like Martin Scorsese. You like movies from him. So you have the ability to play it. If there's a bookmark set, it will play from that position as well. You also have related content. So I might have watched this movie already, but I want to see something else that's um, that's similar enough to it. So then I can do it from here. And additionally, uh, we've got added to favorites. So maybe I don't have time to watch it now, but I've seen it in the related tab, or I've seen it. I just want to add it, so I'll add that to my favorites, so then I can go ahead and watch that another time. Uh, if I go back to the, uh, the, but I won't show you the player now, it's the same functionality as, as you have in live, it's got the start over feature, so you can watch it from the beginning, and you can also seek through that. There's also the ability to add multiple audio and subtitles, uh, depending on the content, which is good, even like we were saying on, uh, even like we were saying on Wednesday, we're in Scandinavia, people are fluent in English, we're in, but sometimes you might want subtitles there. Sometimes you've got some background noise and you want to just be able to hear that. Uh, the last feature I want to show you, which is quite nice and, I, and quite unique, is the ability to, to hop between different applications depending on the, the content. So here on the TV page, they've got a lot of content, a lot of catch-up content specifically from the different channels. And they have a nice picker here where I can pick the different channels and it just filters out all that content. I will pick content from NRK. That is the national broadcaster here in Norway. Um, and they have their own application as well. So if I open the details page for NRK content, you can see that here we have a, where the traditional play button would be, it says play directly in the NRK application. So what we have is I have my Rich TV app. I go to play NRK content, I press play, and it will open the NRK application directly. And then I can play the content in that app. 
if I want to go back and I then I can do the same and then I'm left on the, the same and I can exit the NRK application and then now here I am in Rick's TV again. And I can go back and I can find content again through the related tab or I can add this to my favorites and I can view it from there. So that's it for the demo. Um, thank you for the time. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the Q&A section. I'll do my best to answer those. So I think for now, back to you, Esmond. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Adrian. Um, that's uh, quite an impressive service. I, I know that uh, Rigs TV also uh, have another uh, service called Stream uh, that, that is more of a pure OTT offering. Uh, could you perhaps say a few words about that as well? Yes, um, so, so Stream is a very similar application, very similar content, um, but it's just, a, it's just a slight variant on, on Rigs TV, different skinning, um, slightly different content, like I said. Uh, but it's more aimed at the like the OTT market um, compared to Rick's TV. Yeah, so Rick's TV is for their DTT customers basically that subscribe to their uh, uh, DTT service, and they get this app as 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 part of that. While Stream is actually a pure OTT, so they went ahead and uh, negotiated rights for for all that content to offer as as a pure OTT as well. Which, is, which was the first in, in Norway and uh, probably in, in the Nordics as well of, of doing this model. And uh, they're building up a, a, an audience and a customer based on, uh, on that uh, as well. And uh, they've been quite clever about it and uh, been able to launch that on many devices and, and, uh, and getting that service uh, successfully out. Mm. Okay, thanks a lot, Adrian. We will uh, move on in the program here. So next up is uh, uh, a presentation from uh, NRK. So NRK as well uh, does not really require much uh, introduction. Uh, they are the public broadcaster uh, here in, um, uh, in, in Norway. They also running um, a very successful uh, OTT streaming service, uh, NRK uh, TV. And I think it's actually more, they have more streams per week than Netflix and Disney Plus. So it's, it's by far the most uh, popular uh, service. It's obviously free, but, uh, but still. And um, what NRK have done very well, they, they went through all the effort of not only supporting the usual devices of the Apple TVs, Android TVs, smart TVs, uh, tablet and mobiles, but they also went through the effort of getting their app uh, on the different set of boxes from the distributors. So they, they are live on the Rix TV box, the Telenor uh, Get and, who, and, and Altibox here in, in, uh, in Norway, in addition to all these devices. So they have a, a, great, a great reach on their uh, service. Today we will have uh, uh, Tanya and Tony to uh, talk about uh, some of these numbers behind this and also how they work with their visual identity. So Tanya is, um, she's the, um, uh, she's actually of Dan Danish of her origin, and uh, despite that she's still uh, young, she's uh, like a veteran in the in the TV uh, tech community here in in the Nordics. She she started her career as a product manager in uh, in TV2 in 2012, uh, before she moved on to NRK in 2015, where she's been heading up the development of NRK TV. Uh, Tony uh, Josendal, he uh, he holds two bachelor degrees in uh, engineering and industrial design. Um, and he's been working with the design and UX in, um, with video and video conferencing for the last 10 years. Uh, joined NRK in 2015, where he's been leading the design team uh, on NRK TV since 2018. So these guys know what they're talking about. I will hand it over to you now. I guess it's Tony that will be presenting. <clears throat> Hi, thank you uh, for uh, the very nice words. Um, I'll start out and uh, when Tony is ready. So uh, we haven't done a, a remote presentation from different locations before, so please um, <laughs> bear with us if uh, something goes wrong. But uh, we'll just uh, jump into to this. Um, some quick facts. 
about us. Uh, we have actually two streaming services uh, in NRK. One is for all audiences, which is the NRK TV application. And one is really dedicated to kids from 2 to 12. Uh, we have uh, three uh, broadcast channels uh, and we do have some um, event channels as well. And we actually have a huge catalog of more than 140,000 programs available. So you can watch uh, news reels back from 1933 if you're really interested in, in that kind of stuff. And we're proud to be the first uh, public service broadcaster in the world, uh, or at least we think we are the first public service broadcaster in the world, who actually went uh, forward in 2015 and binge published uh, a new NRK original uh, before it actually went uh, on NRK One, which is the main channel of uh, of NRK. So. Um, we, uh, we try to, to stay ahead and not be uh, known as the old, boring uh, public service uh, for women and men. And we've learned that we work uh, best and achieve the best results if we work uh, in a culture across different uh, divisions. These, uh, I'll try to just kind of map out it to show how, um, uh, how many people we actually have to interact with. And, um, uh, we work with uh, both the editors and the, and the planners in strategy and media, and we also work with the, the people who do the TV productions. But Tony and I are based in uh, the product development team, and we are placed in the technology department that also has the production systems and workflows and the distribution. So um, we have actually been, uh, we have inside uh, my team, we have uh, dedicated teams that work with uh, design, the design team that Tony uh, heads up. Uh, but we also have uh, a lot of uh, API teams, uh, for example, for uh, the front page uh, editing and so forth, but also the platform teams uh, for Apple, Android and, and web. And then we borrow services from, uh, for example, the, the operators platforms that you were talking about, Espen, from a Swedish company called Acido. Yeah, uh, it's, um, oh, you went back, <laughs> Tony. Great. So here about the numbers that we were talking about. Uh, what is a, a key understanding for us is actually that people want to watch TV on the biggest screen available. And I've, I've brought you to you the numbers going all the way back from uh, 2016, just to show you how, uh, how it has been evolving with more and more uh, TV screens being able to uh, have nice uh, streaming experiences. So for NRK, uh, in, uh, for the NRK TV service, which is the, for all audiences, 53% uh, of the unique devices actually, uh, of the TV screens is uh, the equivalent to the 67% of the time spent in the service. So people do want to watch on the biggest screen available, but, if we go into the kids application, the, it's actually what you can see here is that the mobile and the tablet are really important screens. They are often the biggest screen available for, for the kids when they fight about the, the, the big screen in, in the living room. But if they get the chance, uh, and as you can see here uh, with the numbers growing, they want to watch on the TV screen as well. Um, in NRK, uh, it's actually been, um, the linear channels uh, have been, well, they've been a steady part of like 30% of uh, the time spent in the service, but COVID-19 has really had an impact here for us. And, and that's actually some interesting uh, things to, to keep up on because um, as, you, as you know, there's been a lot of uh, huge events that has been canceled, sports events, uh, the Eurovision Song Contest, uh, and etc. So um, that has actually de declined a lot. So going from a steady 30% to about 20%. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also just um, wanted to tell you about how we think about what's uh, the core for us. The core for us is to create renewed TV hats. I mean, coming as a big uh, public service broadcaster, you would think it's natural that we kind of um, could think of us as leaning back, but we can't. And we know that the, the streaming services are our future. So we're constantly trying to, to get people to use us more frequently. And it's going the right directions, but uh, we still have uh, some room for improvement. 
And we believe uh, that the improvement and the magic happens when we work together across technology and the editorial staffs and the user experience. And just to give you kind of a, an insight about what that is, here is a show that's called The Conscription, Ila, the first exchange in, in uh, Norwegian. And uh, back in December 2019, uh, we experimented with doing two pilot episodes of uh, 10 minutes, and that was a huge success. And then they went on and produced uh, 10 more episodes uh, of 12 to 15 minutes in TV series quality. And just as you can see here, this purple spike is all the time spent watching this, uh, these last 10 episodes. Uh, and that's, that's just amazing. I mean, the, the rest of the blue here is the rest of the catalog of 140,000 uh, programs. And now you have 12 episodes uh, coming out and really engaging people. So uh, these are kind of the things that we look into. And this is why uh, we think of content uh, as really important. And uh, I think you can tell us a lot more about that, Tony. So I'll leave the, the word to you. Thanks, Anya. Yeah, I'll talk a bit more about our content uh, afterwards. But first, a big shout out to our fantastic design team. And I'll also mention that for the work on visual design uh, visual and visual identity, we've teamed up with an external agency called Heydays. Uh, the, the main component that builds the brand of NIK TV is, of course, our content. But we believe that user interaction and the visual identity are important amplifiers. And that's why, and uh, we use those to enhance the experience of the content. Okay, so let's start with a little bit of a background. In 2007, our service looked like this. It was named NRK Net TV and looked more like a news site. In 2012, it was rebranded and positioned as a catch-up service, providing users the opportunity to watch episodes that they missed on linear TV. But then something big happened, something that was going to change everything. Netflix entered the market and changed the game. They established the convention of on-demand streaming as we all know it today. A year later, early 2014, we launched on iOS and Android we also launched on the big screens and suddenly we were available in everyone's pockets and living rooms and became uh, the go-to platform for watching TV. But several of our users were starting to get frustrated by our short rides. They naturally had the same expectations to us as the experience they were getting on, it, on Netflix. So as Tanya mentioned, in 2015, we binge released a whole season for the first time. And this was a big shift in our uh, content strategy. With better rights, our growing catalog needed to be showcased properly, so we started an initiative to improve the imagery in the service by providing guidance and guidelines, as you see here. But when we the same year did a couple of focus groups and asked the attendees to describe NRK TV as a party, they described it as a pretty boring one. And in contrast, Netflix party sounded a lot more fun. So what this told us was that the history of NRK TV really had made an imprint in people's minds. And especially amongst our younger audience, we were met with words like old school, traditional and boring. So even though we had changed a lot content wise, the younger generation's associations to us had not changed. So we started a project to rebrand the service with a new visual identity. We explored several paradoxes throughout this project and I'll cover two of them today. Um, early on, we were discussing how much we were willing to differentiate ourselves from the other streaming services, sorry, uh, at the expense of breaking with some well-established conventions in the market. We also discussed the need to stand out with a strong and distinct NRK signature without getting in the way of the content. So part one was to create a toolbox with elements that distinctly stood out as NIK. We did this by developing a form language built on the shapes of an NRK logo, which we applied to our icons and our illustrations. And we made these distinct shapes move in a unique way, here exemplified by the play pause button. And here by moving illustrations.
Part two was to figure out how to let the content be the key. We ended up developing a real-time algorithm that generates the average color from the key out and lets the content react with and color the whole service, which took us from this to this, where we differentiate ourselves with a strong NRK identity that lets the content unfold. So I'll summarize this with a short movie, followed by a demo. There are some text in Norwegian in the beginning here, so I'll try to voice over it with my lower voice. Let's see if this works. From laughter, hope, happiness, to crying, fear, anger, and shame. Reactions moments that moves us. We get us moved by the content. We get this color our experience. So let's move over to demo. Okay, so this is the front page of our um, there we go, of our Apple TV app. Um, you see the color algorithm here that generates a dark, a medium, and a light color based on the series key out image. So you'll see that that's go through throughout the whole uh, service. You'll see that this, uh, the colors change when I navigate in the background. Uh, the front page here contains of a top section that is made for our users to discover a new series. The content here is presented with key art, a description, and a backdrop image. And you'll see that when I hover it for a while, it starts playing, auto-playing a trailer in the background. And once I'm finished watching this trailer, I can just continue uh, navigating um, and explore more. If I then enter a show, you'll see that we've introduced the same, okay, I'll go to the top first. You'll see that we've introduced the same elements with key art, description, backdrop image, and trailer on the series page uh, for the same reasons as on the front page. The trailer starts playing in the background with no sound, when I hover the trailer button, sound gets on, and I, when I press enter here, uh, the trailer goes, goes full screen. Login users are taken to this talk the first time they enter uh, the series, but if they start watching the series, they're taken down to the episode list so that they can continue watching their next episode. Okay, so I guess that's what we have time to demo now. Uh, I hope it gave you a little bit of a taste of our service with our new visual identity. So I'll thank you so much for that. Thank you so much, uh, Tony and Tanya. Um, a very impressive demo there at the end. Uh, I am a big fan and a user myself of the, of the service. Um, so uh, one question I have here is, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's truly great work that you that, that you guys are doing, uh, but I wonder how uh, how do you go about? I mean, we saw the complexity of your organization, and you have quite big teams. How do you go about deploying design changes like these and new things out to so many devices and users? And also, you have more than one service as well that you're managing. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a headache. Um... And, uh, and it's also always a part of um, uh, when we do new functionality that we need to take into account which platforms are we going to deploy to. Uh, we have learned that you don't need to have a big uh, fully just uh, push it on the same minute, uh, but you need to have uh, the applications following uh, in, uh, in functionality and, and look and feel um, quite quickly after uh, after it so it's a, 
uh, sometimes uh, platforms are left behind and then they get too far away from how we think about people should uh, should uh, enjoy in a KTV. Uh, but it's a constant headache uh, and some applications are, uh, are left behind for quite long, but we always do it based on uh, on how much time uh, and how, mu how many users there are on that particular uh, platform. So the most important platforms for us are always um, upgraded uh, quickly uh, one after another. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have, I know the complexity of these things uh, myself, but um, another question is, I mean, we could see that um, uh, Discovery, the guys from Dplay, they showed their design system uh, the other day. Is that also something that uh, they uh, like a concept and that, that you are using in your design work? Sure, uh, definitely. I think the challenge by a design system is that we have such a broad uh, platform width here. Uh, so we have one design system for each platform uh, that adapts for the different conventions uh, within the platform and also for the different uh, screen sizes it's, uh, it's for. But it really helps uh, unify the experience and also helps the developers um, quickly get up to speed uh, with new features. Uh, okay, another question for you, Tony. Um, I, I can imagine that you do a lot of uh, research uh, and you're researching other uh, services in the work. Uh, so wh where do you get the most inspiration for and what is your favorite other OTT streaming service? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a big question. <laughs> uh, I think inspiration-wise, uh, of course, we look at the streaming markets uh, and the evolutions there. Uh, and for example, while we were working on the visual identity uh, a year back, we looked a lot at Apple's TV app and the way they were working on the different presentation te techniques they used for their content. Um, a bit later on, we've also been studying Quibi, uh, and there's some interesting, nice micro interactions there uh, that we've been discussing a lot in our design community. But I also, we all naturally look outside of the streaming markets to get inspiration. Um, we look at social media that pushes the boundaries most these days. They establish new patterns and conventions that the younger generations especially adopt first, right? Mm -hmm. And also digital interactive art is really inspiring to learn from, um, especially looking into signature micro interactions that we believe is an important part uh, and in integral part of uh, creating signatures. And I also mentioned that, uh, the, the history of NRK uh, and the logo uh, that goes back like from the 30s, uh, functionalism, functional architecture uh, is also something that we take into our work. So yeah, it's quite, quite broad. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. Uh, just one final question here uh, regarding the devices. So we could see um, on your stats, uh, Tanya, that uh, the TV device category is kind of the biggest now and uh, uh, stands for the most of the, of the streaming impressions. But could you perhaps uh, tell us a bit behind what's behind that number? What kind of devices and uh, any pointers in terms of popular devices uh, inside that TV category? <laughs> it's uh, it's a really um, I think it's about twelve different applications that sum up the TV screens, um, uh, so uh, it, it's no wonder that uh, that the, it, it's a big uh, part uh, part as well. But um, um, I can't really uh, disclose uh, what are the most popular ones um, in regards of numbers. But as you can see, we we have. Android teams, Apple teams, and web teams in-house. So that those are uh, the, the really big uh, 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 vendors out there as well that we, we need to support. So that kind of gives you an indication about what is really popular. And um, uh, I can tell you that we also count Chromecast uh, watching as part of the TV screen. So uh, even though you started the stream from your mobile, it's a, uh, it's, uh, we do, uh, put that into to the TV screen category as well. 
So if does that, that apply for AirPlay as well? Or no, uh, not unless it's uh, done directly into our uh, Apple TV app. But the Apple TV app is, of course, a part of the uh, of the numbers. Mm. And we are, we are fortunate to have the old uh, legacy uh, uh, Apple TV uh, um, location as well. So um, so the, that is actually uh, a platform that uh, stays alive for quite a long time. I can uh, tell you that. Yeah, you were one of the few lucky that uh, got on board on that first generation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you that we weren't uh, lucky enough to actually be able to uh, launch uh, our uh, kids application on, on that one. So it was really for a, a very few select ones to, to get there. I think uh, Annika and SVT were lucky to, to be there too, but it was for uh, very few Scandinavian partners. Yeah. Okay, well done, uh, uh, Tony and Tanya, and thanks a lot. Um, we are getting to the uh, to the end here. So, and uh, as uh, as usual, we will uh, give Ajay Anand, the CEO of uh, Norwegian Media, uh, the the final word, and then it's the final uh, word for the for this week conference as well. So, thank you all, and uh, I, over to you, Ajay. Thank you very much for that, uh, Espen. Um, I get my 55 seconds of glory, finally. Uh, that, but that's all I get, I guess. Uh, this is the world's shortest conference, uh, as we intended it to be, at least in the TV and streaming domain. Um, we're making the most of, of the situations that we are in. Uh, I hope that Norigen has been able to contribute to the community. And that's the whole point of northernwaves.tv. Uh, please follow us on the website, northernwaves.tv. It's a community that we've started. Uh, our day job is, of course, TV, video streaming, tech design and, and, and hosting. But our, our hobbies around our work is, of course, organizing such events because we want to build a community, a community that allows us to uh, become more knowledgeable, become more aware and get to know more people from within the industry. We can't do so much more networking online, but we're trying to figure that out. Uh, the Nordics is uh, the region in which we are based in, but we want to take that out to the world. Uh, the Nordics has been uh, a start in a video valley for many years. Uh, many uh, brilliant things happen here. And I, I contest when people say Netflix is the best streaming service. Of course, it's global. But there's a reason that in Norway, people watch NRK more than Netflix. It's because of not just amazing, fantastic content, but like you saw uh, Tony and Tanya present today, thank you very much for your time and your, your energy and, and the knowledge that you've shared. Every pixel, every icon, and every part of your application is absolutely beautiful. I thank you for giving the Norwegian people that. And I think that you've also been a big amount of uh, inspiration for the rest of the, the world in terms of uh, watching the streaming services. Thank you to Annika from SVT. All of the public broadcasters here in the Nordics uh, stand out as the best streaming services, not just because they're public broadcasters and have a lot of money, I guess, but it's because they've got the best of talent and the best of equipment, and they want to give the users the best of experiences. That's what TV is all about. We've been doing this for one week now. We will uh, hopefully continue something based on your comments. If you have any questions, please email us at info at northernwaves.tv. Uh, a big, big thanks to my, my, uh, my team, uh, Espen and Adrian, you're superstars. You should get into TV someday. Uh, you've been absolutely brilliant. As much as I made you dress up, I dressed down with the Nordic theme. I'm wearing an H&M t-shirt. Uh, we, we, we need to uh, take the time to what it is today. Uh, we're all working from home. Uh, let's not make this the new norm, but let's look forward to coming back next summer, hopefully, uh, in a more uh, normal way. But, uh, but up until then, from our home to yours, I wish you the very best for the rest of the year. Stay safe and see you soon on a screen near you. See you. Bye-bye.